started? Yep, ready to go. Right, good morning everyone. Welcome to the uh, Fire and Rescue Authority meeting this morning on the uh, 8th of February 2021. Can we uh, find out who's present? Uh, Sally, do you want to make a roll call or do you... Or yeah, you I'll um, shout out which members I've got down as being present and the apologies that I know of. So present, I've got councillors White, Davies, Ellsbury, Hussey, Ali, Ibrahim, Lister, Norton, Colbran, Brown, Spencer, Thomas, Bradwick, Holmes, Roberts, Evans, Jones and Drake. I've got apologies from Councillor Harries and Councillor Jarvie. I'm here, Sally. You're here. Sorry, who was that? Councillor Shaw. Councillor Shaw, Rod, thank Rod, you. Rod. I'm, I'm here, Rod. Councillor Ibrahim. Councillor Ibrahim, yes, I said you, Councillor Ibrahim. Sorry, my apologies. We've got Dave White indicating Sal. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor White. I'm going to leave 11 o'clock. I'm going for the vaccine. Okay, okay thank okay. you. Right. Okay, then. So we got only two apologies then, Sally. I think Councillor Yes, I think Councillor Hussey is indicating. All right. Thank you, Sally. I've got to uh, leave the meeting for about 20 minutes to go down the end of the road and say goodbye to one of my, uh, my uh, childhood friends. Thanks. All right. OK, Adrian. All right, then. So we got the attendance. We got the ups. All right. Can I go to the Declaration of Interest? Members of the Fire and Rescue Authority are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare both only and in writing any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of matters contained in the agenda in accordance with the provision of the Local Government Act 2000. The Fire and Rescue Authority standing orders under Members' Code of Conduct. Any declarations of interest? Um. None? Chair, just you. Councillor Brown's indicating, Chair. Yeah, I'll right, just say the usual, right, Louise. The ones that we sign in relation to our own authorities. Um, if we could yes. do that, please, Chair. Thank you. Yes, we, we automatically put those down for anything that impacts on home authorities. So, has anyone declared an interest? No. Right, can I go on to the Chairman's announcements? Uh, who can give an update now on the recent uh, letter to members on the employer and union negotiations? Who? Who? Uh, thanks, Chair. Morning, members. Um, I circulated a recent correspondence uh, following recent discussions between the National Employers and the Gage Union. Um, and really want to give members the opportunity if they had any questions to ask on the correspondence that was circulated about two weeks ago. Anyone got any questions on it? No? No one's indicating now. Right. You can also update on the recent Chairs and Deputy Minister meeting, which we had with the Deputy Minister uh, last week. Hugh, do you want to make any comments? Because there wasn't much said. I know you're a bit yeah. frustrated, but you are. Yeah, there was a couple of points. Um, I think uh, well, we met with the Deputy Minister on the 21st of January. We discussed all board areas and engagement with the Deputy Minister and her, and her office throughout COVID. As, uh, we've probably met more often, Chair, than, than we probably would have in a, in a normal year. So whilst it's video conferencing-wise, we do have that regular contact. Uh, we discussed uh, COVID, our response, the broadening of the role, building safety and the budget. 122. So, and the COVID response, uh, myself and the chair um, highlighted the good work that was going on across the service day to day, and also the extensive work that our volunteers are doing with the ambulance service. Um, and to update members, we've done over 380 shifts uh, with the ambulance service, which equates to over 4,500 hours where our firefighters have volunteered uh, to work with our ambulance colleagues. The volunteers that are working with uh, with the ambulance service have now received their, um, their vaccination, so they've got the same health protection as our NHS workers and are receiving health surveillance testing, through black flow testing twice. 
a week as well. Um, we've had conversations and discussions with Welsh Government and Welsh Government officials on the mass vaccination programme and what assistance that can provide, and those conversations are ongoing. Um, and we've looked uh, through a request to assist with an Iron Bevan Health Board with track, trace and protect uh, personnel. But um, we got to a position a fortnight ago where, where they weren't, weren't required. Um, we're constantly pushing for um, enhanced health surveillance for all staff across South Wales. Uh, Fire and Rescue Service with, uh, with the Welsh Government. Um, the Chair and the Deputy Chair wrote to the Deputy Minister before Christmas. Um, identifying the opportunity to introduce lateral flow testings across the service, which would enhance our COVID secure working environments because people would do it at home and it would capture those that are asymptomatic um, and therefore not presenting with any signs um, or symptoms of COVID um, in, a, in uh, the workplace. Uh, Broadening the role, what, what does a role that a fire fighter look like going forward? Uh, members will be aware of the Deputy Minister's ambition published in January 2019. That work is progressing well. De Debbie Rose is representing the service on a, on a working group that is looking at three broad areas. Emergency medical response, um, the uh, uh, non-injured faller, and early intervention and prevention activities. And that, that work is progressing well. Um, and the minister presented a paper to the cabinet in November, which is a, a publicly available document if members should wish to see it. On the tragic backdrop of Grenfell um, over three and a half years ago, um, UK government and Welsh government are looking to um, reinforce building safety legislation. There is now a white paper that has been published. It's quite an extensive white paper. And our specialist building fire safety currently going through that white paper to identify impacts um, and considerations for us. And that consultation, I think, is ongoing until around April time. And then when we looked at the budget 2021-2022, uh, the chair received correspondence from the deputy minister last week confirming that our Welsh government grants that we currently get for generally around community safety work and national resilience work will be cash flat and as was in 2020-2021. I think that chair, that, that covers the, uh, the meeting we had with the deputy minister on the 21st of January. Thank you, Hill. On the, Glenn, do you want to come in and question on that issue? Yes, thank you, Chairman. With regard to the uh, draft building safety bill, uh, in the last meeting on page seven, there was just one sort of sentence referring to it. I'm just wondering if we could have a little bit more information at some time in the future on this, because I see it 135 pages, and what could the re repercussions would be upon the fire service? If I could, Chair. Um, yeah, more than happy to provide just, members. I'm not expecting an answer today. It's a, it's a pretty comprehensive document. If we can come back to you at some future time. Yeah, Councillor Holmes, you, you'll, be, uh, you'll be pleased to I won't be giving you a comprehensive breakdown of the 100 and one page uh, consult. <laughs> but we will fill it in a... Uh, <laughs> I think I got away with one. Um, but yes, we, we meet in with our building fire safety team this week on Friday to have initial discussions around what our preliminary thoughts and areas are. We've also been asked to attend a local government um, committee hearing down in Welsh Government as well to present our thoughts on that. Um, generally, it'll probably result in additional resources required and impact yeah. required by the rest of the authorities, but we really need to understand that before we can put an impact assessment back to Welsh Government and the impact for us particularly with the built environment that we've got around the southern area of our service as well. Yeah, but Chairman, uh, I think that what has happened there, the officer has mentioned it, about additional resources. Um, it's the usual sort of thing. The government put up this legislation, expected to do it with the same sort of resources. Thank you. All right, Glenn. Anyway, we saw that I went for you. Uh, the other one is the audit wheels are doing a routine rotation of officers and Alison Butler, who had headed our the finance audits, will be moving on to new operations. Uh, C. Franks from Audit Wheels will be there for the audit report. So you can, we convey our best wishes to Alison. Would you agree to that? Thank you for the service. All agree? All agree or not? Agree. Yes, agree. Right, thank you. Agree. You're still all there, are you? Yes, we're here. 
Right, then we then go on to the next item, which is uh, the minutes of the Fire and Rescue Authority meeting held on the 14th of December 2020. I move, Chair. The move is that seconded. Second. Second. Can we go through for accuracy? I second it. Uh, right, on accuracy, page five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Hang on, the page is all stuck here. Well, well, well. 12, 13, and 14. It's moved and seconded. Sally, do you want to vote or do you want? No, Chair, Sorry. providing. Yes, can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Yeah, no, providing all members are in agreement. Everyone in agreement, that's all right then, that makes that easier. Right, then we go to the next meeting of the Finance and Asset Performance Management Scrutiny Committee held on the 12th of October on page 15. Someone move. Yeah, move, move. That, yeah. move. Second. Seconded. Second. Councillor Shaw is indicating, Chair. Councillor oh. Shaw. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just a, a, a brief typo, I think, on page 19, section 10, the if paragraph you, 3. From the Lord, if I can come to that page, I'll go through the pages first, all right? Of course, right. thank you, Chair. Page 15, 16, 17, 18, and now 19, Rod. 19, yeah, thank you, Chair. The uh, paragraph 3 from the bottom uh, says it was stressed the service is unable to totally mitigate risks. However, in instances of a joint crew crab, the wearing of face coverings is mandatory. So it's just a small typo, but it did make me chuckle. Yes. Well, it proves you read the minutes anyway. <laughs> yeah, it did indeed. <laughs> well, thank all you, right, Chair. subject to that correction, okay. Then to page 20 for accuracy and 21. No, no one against it. Thank you. Then we go to the next minutes, which is the local pension board committee meeting held on the 19th of October 2020 on page I, 23. I move chair. Yes. Steve, move. I move, I move chair. Uh, who else is on the meeting? One or second? I'll second. Seconded. For accuracy then, page 23, 24, 25, and 26. Anyone, anyone objects in it? No, thank you. Then we go to the next standards committee meeting held on the 3rd of February, 2020, page 27. So we note them, and so I don't know about accuracy. Um, oh, Councilor Williams only one there, so. Shall we note those minutes? Someone yes. will we note them? Yes, noted. Could I Not propose them, Chair? Thank you. Yeah. Right, update action, Sally, on page 33. Yes, there's uh, no further updates to those provided in the report, so happy to take any questions. Anyone got any comments or questions on that? None. Right, we no. go to the next item then is the audit wheel certificate compliance, audit of the assessment of the South Wales uh, Fire and Rescue Authority's 2019-20 performance in that's page 37. Sally? Yes, I think Steve Franks from Audit Wales is here, so I'm assuming right. I can't see him at the moment. Is Steve Franks there? I, I can hear you. You can hear me. Oh, you can't see us, can you? I can see you. Hang on. I'll just turn my camera on and off. No, All right. Right. Steve, are you going to take us through this? I will. I will. I think this will be the world's shortest presentation, I think. it's All this says, really, is if we use a kind of car analogy, it basically means that you've got your kind of cars past its MOT, it's insured and you're away really. That's what it really says in, in kind of audit terms, bearing in mind it's 2019-20 and so we're basically a year behind on the old, on that side of things really. So that's a clean bill of health, we couldn't find anything wrong if, you, if you've got to catch my drift. 
the next bit that 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 we'll basically talk about, which is the annual audit and inspection letter. That basically means you've actually passed your driving tests and you've not run over anyone and not had a crash. So that, that and that's all okay. So it's right. it's it's all done as actually part of the local government measure, which actually goes this year. So so this current year, two thousand and twenty twenty one. So that'll be the last year. Kind of when you see all these multitude of bits of paper fly your way, really. So are we covered uh, six one and uh, six one and six two now? Yeah, chair. We'll need to take. Um, I know we're going to take a, a vote, vote on now. each. Councillor Shaw is indicating. Rod, Rod wants to speak. Rod. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, that was a very brief summary, I think, um, but it, uh, it sort of overlays the fact that it's a, yet again another unqualified audit opinion, and uh, the fire service should be complimented, frankly, on its uh, record keeping and its methods, policies, and procedures. So, I would like to, on behalf of myself and, and members, I presume, uh, thank the uh, authority and the service for such a good, clean bill of health again. Thank you, Rod. Well, we've had this continuing now, as far as I'm concerned, for about nine years now. So um, we are very proud of our service, and they've done a fantastic job, as far as I'm concerned. Anyone else got any questions on this or comments? Chair, Chair Val, Val, Councillor Val Smith's trying to come in. Come on, Val. Good morning. Sorry about my problem arriving. I'm not used to the technical. Um, very good to have passed the driving test, but it cost us four thousand pounds more which um, was uh, attached apparently to the the actuarial revaluation. And it just raised a question in my mind, Chairman, in that sort of the money doesn't basically exist in my mind because it's it's just there. Why we had to actually pay additional funds for the actuarial work, I assumed that that lay with the Welsh Assembly, but I'm probably getting myself tied in knots. So I'm saying we've paid four thousand pounds more, and it's related to the actuarial revaluation. You're actually looking at the fund, and I thought the fund was the responsibility of Welsh government. But chair, then about it. just to pick up that point, Chair um, Councillor Smith's right. The um, the audit work, the additional audit work, was down to some issues around the reporting of the the valuation of the fund in particular. Although there were a few other minor points. Um, the whilst the actual pension costs themselves are met by Welsh Government from the fund in terms of a deficit position, uh, the actual cost of accounting for it and running it um, sit with the authority Val. So we don't actually charge the fund for the running of the, the actual pension scheme itself, yeah, right. it's the actual cost of the pensions. <laughs> Um, I want, oh, thanks for bringing that paragraph to my attention, Councillor Smith, as well, because I was just going to raise the, the an issue on the wording in that, just to allay uh, members' fears, really. Uh, it, it does actually say that uh, the increase in fees was due in part to remote working and in part due to significant issues yes. arising during the audit. I was just going to allay members' fears, really. The, the use of the word significant <laughs> in the context of materiality it's not that there were major issues with the, the the audit or the the actual accounts themselves. It was just that they were there were some specific issues that were significant in terms of the context of the the accounts themselves. Thank you very right. much. Thanks, Chris. All right. Anyone else got any questions either to Steve or to Sally uh, or to Chris? Sorry, none. Right. Um, I will move the recommendation to one. The members accept. The audit of Wales certificate compliance attached on appendix one. Is that seconded? Second. Right. Sally, you want to vote? Yes, please. Oh. Councillor Ali. In favour. Councillor Bradwick. In favour. Councillor Brown. In favour. Councillor Colbran. In favour. Councillor Davies. In favour. Yeah. Councillor Drake. Oh, Councillor Drake. Uh, uh, in favour, I couldn't unlock myself. <laughs> Councillor Ibrahim. In favour. Councillor Ellsbury. In favour. Councillor Evans. In, in favour. Councillor Hodgins. Councillor Hodgins, not with us. Councillor Hussey. In favour. 
Councillor Jarvey hasn't joined us yet. Councillor Jones. It's excuses, excuses. Councillor Jones. No, Councillor Lister. Councillor Lister. In favour. Councillor Norton. In favour. Um, it's okay if I ask one member. Themselves, just find it quite hard to hear. Can, I, can the members stop a minute? Can the members who are not speaking put their mics off, please? Put your mics off, right? Thank if you, you want to come in, then obviously put it on, but keep it off until you, you're in that position, right? Sally, sorry, yeah, Councillor um, Roberts, in favor, Councillor Shaw, in favor. Councillor Smith. In favour. Councillor Spencer. Sally, I lost connection, so I didn't miss, I, I missed most of the presentation, so I think I may uh, may not be able to vote. No, that's fine. Thank you. Councillor Thomas. In favour. Councillor White. In favour. Councillor Williams. In favour. Thank you, Chair. That's unanimous. Right, let me go to the audit wheels. We done have we done our audit wheels letter two thousand nineteen. I think you've done the presentations and discussion on it. We just obviously need to have a vote. You're on the board yet, are we? Right. No. Sorry. Yeah. I move. Counts. I move. Is that seconded? I second. Yeah. I second it. Right, sorry. Okay. Councillor Ali. In favour. Councillor Bradwick. In favour. Councillor Brown. In favour. Councillor Colbran. In favour. Councillor Davies. In favour. Councillor Drake. I can see you, Councillor Drake, if you do a thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm I'm I've un unlocked. Oh. Yeah, in favour. Okay, Councillor Ibrahim. In favour. Councillor Ellsbury. In favour. Councillor Evans. In favour. Councillor Hussey. <laughs> he's Councillor gone, Hussey. He's, no. gone to the, gone, he's gone to the funeral, I think. He's gone. Councillor Jones. <laughs> Councillor Jones has gone as well. No, Councillor, I'm not. Oh, no. I'm so yeah, I've got a problem. Are you in, in favour? Anyway. In favour? Okay. Favor. Councillor Lister. In favour. Councillor Norton. In favour. Councillor Roberts. In favour. Councillor Shaw. In favour. Councillor Smith. In favour. Councillor Spencer. Again, sorry, I missed it. So I won't be able to vote. Okay. Councillor Thomas. In favour. Councillor White. In favour. Councillor Williams. In favour. Thank right, you, thank you. That's carded then. Gentlemen, have you been left out again? You've been left out, right. Don't Sorry, Holmes. Councillor Holmes. Okay, fine. Apology accepted. Thank you. Are you in favour? Yes, and the notes for the last one as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, that's cut it then. Right, we go to the next item then, which is uh, 611 is the revenue budget 2021 22 and the capital program, page 45. Chris. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm sure members will be familiar with most of the content at this point now through the various committees we've undertaken over the uh, the FAPM and the scrutiny group. But I'll go through it again just to make sure that members are fully aware of, uh, of the decision that they're taking. Um, the recommendation in the report is to increase the contributions budget by 3.54% next year. Um, we started off with a medium term financial plan, which indicated a potential need for an increase of around 4.3%. Um, we subsequently identified around £600,000 worth of reductions 
uh, in that budget to bring it down to the 3.54%, which is in front of you today. Um, the, the report itself on page 46 shows the history of your decision making around the budget. I'm just pausing here because Sorry, uh, there's someone turning papers very close to the microphone. Could I, could I ask again that you turn your mics off, please, if you're not uh, not speaking? Thank you. Okay. Right. Um, so page 46 shows the history of your decision making and the fact that you've always, as an authority, tried to ensure that you are cognizant of the uh, the resources available to your constituent councils when setting your budget. And you'll see from the chart on page 46 that there's a fairly good record of actually ensuring that uh, if resources are increasing, that you are below the level um, being uh, enjoyed by your council counterparts. And uh, if, if there's a reduction, then your reduction is greater. So that, that, that has been a very positive trend in terms of the, the last decade of austerity. Um, the one thing that we were waiting for for a bit longer this year than perhaps uh, we'd uh, considered usual was the Welsh Government budgets and budget announcements. The local government settlement didn't come out until December in its draft form, um, and therefore we, we couldn't share that with members earlier. However, that information is now in the public domain. The Welsh Government budget is not intended to be finalised until March, however, so we won't have final final confirmation of that. Um, the indication is for the 10 constituent councils in South Wales that there is an average 4.1% increase in resources um, on a like-for-like -like basis. I appreciate that the resources to individual councils will vary within that, but that's the average figure. And, of course, when setting our budget, it's the average figure that we, we, we need to set as well. Um, I mentioned at the, at the last meeting of Fire Authority that we were waiting for population data. Um, that population data is part of the draft settlement, which is why we hadn't had it. Um, the information set out on page 47 shows the population changes which are now embedded within the local government settlement and form the basis of the distribution of the fire contributions budget amongst the 10 authorities. Um, you'll see in the, in, in the uh, second column from the right that there are quite significant ups and downs this year um, within that table. Um, I'll highlight the two, the two biggest ones you'll see at the bottom of the table. Um, Newport is showing a 2.4% increase as a result of those population changes, and Cardiff shows a, a negative 1.34% as a result of those population changes. Um, so that impacts on the effect of our 3.54% recommendation, and I'll come to that in a moment. Um, I would stress that the, the population figures there, as always, are are kind of rebased population figures. So it doesn't necessarily mean that Cardiff's population is going down. It might just mean that it's not going down as quick as it was thought to be. So that, that that's an important kind of consideration. Turning over the page, in terms of the detail of the budget itself, um, one of the significant elements of the budget, as you'll be aware, is pay. Um, the interesting thing about pay is that the Chancellor made the announcement in the autumn that pay constraint would be the order of the day for public sector again. We believe there are quite significant risks associated with that, particularly within the, uh, the, the fire service, clearly as one of the blue light responders, uh, especially helping out during this COVID crisis. Um, it's quite possible that we will suffer uh, demands for pay increases from our, uh, our rep bodies. Um, and we, we doubt that a pay constraint um, policy will actually hold. So what we've done is we've included provision for pay as the most prudent um, tack to take in respect of next year's budget. One of the issues that's come out of the consultation, however, um, and I'll, I'll come on to the responses in due course, is, is the question of, well, what would happen if pay increases don't occur and the pay constraint does hold? Um, and what we are suggesting is that we include provision for pay awards, but in the event that those pay awards are settled at lower levels, we would actually agree to reduce the budget in due course. Um, now, the chairman pointed out to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll point out to members as well, uh, that in the past, where, where pay increases have been higher, we have actually absorbed um, those increases for a temporary period in year. Um, so what we're suggesting is a kind of quite a positive position, really, in terms of the local authorities. We're actually offering up any saving 
um, back to them. And that's part of the recommendations in the report. Um, in terms of job evaluation, there's a job evaluation scheme uh, underway, a project underway within the council to look at all Green Book staffs, staff posts. We're not there yet in terms of completing that exercise, and therefore we haven't got a basis for including any specific provision at this time. So we're effectively just parking that issue until such time as that scheme is is agreed and implemented, and there will be subsequent reports back to the, the HRE committee and fire authority on that in due course. Pensions, of course, is still not resolved. There are still issues ongoing with regards to the changes in the pension schemes. Um, we've included within the budget that which we know to date, but there's still some uncertainty about pensions. We can't really provide any further money at this point in time because we simply don't know the outcome in the long term of those decisions. We, we await that information. Um, in terms of ICT, I mentioned the last report, the Fire Authority, there is some significant investment needed to go in to actually maintain the, the, the ICT of the authority in an appropriate fashion. So that provision is included within this report as well. And the chair just mentioned, uh, I think, or, or Hugh just mentioned uh, as part of his presentation, the we have had initial indications that grants are going to be on a flat, cap flat cash flat basis for next year. Um, we haven't had formal notification of that through the grant process yet, but we're hoping, obviously, that that will come to fruition. And the, the, the budget is based on, on that assumption. Uh, moving on to the proposed budget itself in terms of the impact uh, on the authorities, um, we estimated when we, we did this report earlier uh, last year that we would be possibly looking at increases of around 2 to 6%, around a 3.5% average. Um, now, that's proved to be the case. If you look at the table on page 49 of your agenda, you'll see I mentioned already the Newport and Cardiff extremes. You'll see in the bottom right hand corner of that that table that actually we would end up with Newport seeing a, a 6 percent increase in the fire contributions budget next year and Cardiff only a 2 percent. And that's reflected uh, because of the, the population changes that, that have come into play. Um, in terms of the, the capital programme, we've included the capital programme as an appendix to the report. It's only really to note for members um, today in terms of approving it. There are regular updates to the FAPM on the capital programme. So that programme simply reflects the, the current position in terms of FAP's, FAPM's ongoing monitoring and approval of the programme itself. I mentioned budget consultations earlier. Um, we, we've had a couple of consultations in. Um, the ones that I had in to hand when the report was sent out are included in the appendix. They were from Caffili and Bridge End. Bridge End's uh, a letter was essentially expressing that, that you know they were under um, kind of significant financial pressures themselves uh, and asking for more information. And I have provided a letter back to them with, with the additional information they requested. Um, and I've, I've not had a subsequent comeback. I think that was probably to to allow them to feed into their democratic processes around the reasons for the increase. Um, Caffili's response, again, um, sort of acknowledged where we were as a fire service. It did ask that one question, though, around the pay awards. Um, what would we do if pay awards were lower? So I have had an initial conversation with um, with the 10 constituent council treasurers to indicate that I would be putting to members today a request that if you approve the budget at this level and pay awards come in lower, that you would actually delegate powers to me to reduce the budget accordingly. Um, I'm just going to share my screen share because there was one other response that came in from Newport. Um, I hope members can all see that. Um, essentially, it was a short response, um, largely uh, acknowledging again the, the the cost pressures that everyone under the public sector is in, um, and actually again raising the issue around the pay freeze. Um, they actually considered that if the if the pay awards were lower, that that it, then the uh, the over provision would subsequently reduce cost pressures in the in the coming year. Um, I, again, I, I've sort of replied to that letter basically along the same lines as the Caffili letter. So if members approve the report with the recommendations today, then clearly they would uh, they would see that reduction come through if pay awards were settled at the lower level. Um, so I'm hoping all members have had a chance to have a quick uh, read through that. It's quite simple. I'll, I'll stop that now. Thank um, you, Grace. 
so that's that's the the report in essence chair the recommendations are threefold that you approve a, a budget of 77 million five hundred and thirty thousand oh eight nine representing an increase of 3.54 percent that you confirm the capital program as set out in the report and also that that critical last point that i'm asking members to to approve which is that the fire authority agrees to delegate to me discretion to reduce the contributions budget for next year should there be a material downward difference in the actual pay awards um, and you also give me delegated powers to make such calculations as may be necessary to adjust or refund the constituent council contributions accordingly. Clearly, if 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 it was only ten pound, we wouldn't kind of we wouldn't bother. Um, it needs to be a significant enough adjustment to warrant making that uh, making that change. And I'll stop there, Chair, for members to uh, to ask any questions if they have any. Thank you, Chris. Much of to you. Excellent report. Right, uh, questions, comments. Councillor Brown is indicating. Louise. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm pleased that the uh, report actually uh, agrees to um, pay back uh, authorities if the settlement, the pay award settlement, isn't as high as estimated. Um, do we actually know the difference between uh, the 1% and the, the 3%? And I suppose the other concern I've got is, is um, you know, obviously from the feedback from the authorities that you've got, they're all um, struggling with their own budget. I mean, is it sort of the correct sort of policy to take more than you might need and then pay back as opposed to, um, you know, um, estimating in a similar way that uh, uh, local authorities have done with regard to um, pay awards? Thank you. Uh, Chair, um... The, the estimating here that uh, um, the, the pay bill equates to about one five hundred thousand per one percent. So that's the kind of half a million pounds per one percent figure. Obviously, we would do a detailed calculation um, in in the event that the pay awards come out at a lower level. We would actually calculate the uh, the differential on a specific uh, basis. Um, so so that's a million. Then is it? Sorry, sorry, oh, Louise. So, let, let the officer. Louise, let the officer. I'm sorry. Okay, fair so, enough, fair so, so, so ha half a million pounds per one percent estimated. Um, obviously, we would calculate the actual figure. That's across the whole pay group, though. So it would depend on whether it affects grey book, green book, or both. Clearly, in terms of the actual settlement itself. Um, in terms of the question around the the provision in the budget or the or and the refund or the subsequent um, issue of another request, I think that the general sort of rule for us is is prudence. Um, and I've spoken to the ten constituent treasurers on this point in the past. Um, the, the, the sort of view was it, it's easier for councils to budget on the basis of what they know is potentially the worst case scenario and then have a better position given to them with a, a, a reduction or refund than to be presented with a, a budget which is lower than to then set their budgets and council taxes off the back of that and then for me to wade in subsequent in the year and say I need another million pounds or whatever the figure is because clearly councils have a no option then to change their considerations of their budgets or their council tax setting um, when that, that later demand comes in. So that's been the general view of treasurers. They would prefer a prudent position, which would improve rather than a, a kind of slightly less prudent position, which would get worse after they've set budgets. Um, but I appreciate the question, Councillor Brown. I know where it's coming from. <laughs> but that's been our policy anyway, Chris, hasn't it? You know, to cooperate with authorities anyway. It, it, anyone it, else going to, sorry, anyone else got any questions? I think Councillor Brown was trying to comment, but I think she was on mute. Uh, no, that's fine. I think I think Chris has already um, answered the question. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Okay, Louise. Anyone else got any questions or comments? Only a comment, Chairman, that I can recall on one occasion. The only occasion we've gone back to authorities asking for extra money, and it was a pretty unpleasant meeting talking about the fire authority all those years ago i think it's better to get a present later on than not to make a count okay yes yeah, so as, as i've mentioned we've, we've, we've done that before and um where we, we could have uh, you know but a bill to them i think the pension one was in the last few years and we said no we'd we'd cover that cost ourselves 
So we play ball with them as well. They play ball with us. And I think that's the trust we got with authorities, in fact. Anyone else? Can I ask if a not, question, Chairman? Yes, um, you can ask officer, a question, yes. Um, you've had sort of formal responses, written responses or whatever, from just three authorities. Um, does the Treasurer feel that's the right way of doing it? Because obviously there have been discussions with the county treasurers, but to not have a formal recognition in hard copy, do we feel a little hurt? I don't know. It just doesn't seem... It doesn't no. seem very good to me. There are, we are ten authorities, and yet only three, including my own, they've not bothered to respond. Chair, I would I would um, follow up by saying when the um, Kafili question came in around the pay awards, um, as a matter of due course, I did actually copy all ten treasurers in. We try and keep an open communication channel in terms of the what the fire authority is doing on the financial matters all the time. So in that sense, all 10 were aware of our attack on that particular issue. So they they might have felt it um, not necessary to respond on that particular issue. Um, and it may have allayed some of their fears around the overall kind of question in the, in the budget, which was, you know, is it of the right magnitude? Does it need to actually include such provisions? Um, but, but like you, Councillor Smith, I mean, it would be nice to get 10 responses. Of course, in previous years, we have done more of a detailed um, visit to each of the 10 councils. So it has allowed an open dialogue uh, between uh, the senior members, senior officers and the, the authorities' representatives. Um, but we can't, we can't do that every year. It, it's simply too onerous to sort of visit all authorities every year. But we do try and do it on a regular basis. Historically, we have never had 100% respond from the authorities. And if they don't respond, I would always assume that they've got no problem. That's all I can say. Chair, I can assure you if there was a problem, my leader would have let me know. I know, I know. Anyway, uh, anyone else? We're now coming to the recommendations, and we've got three recommendations. I just want to clarify, has anyone got any objections or against any of those uh, recommendations, 10.1, 10.2 or 10.3? If they are, then obviously i got to take each of those separately. Has anyone got any objections to either of those recommendations? No one's indicated. If not, no. can, I, can, I, can I, if not, I will recommend, right, 10.1, 10.2 and 10.3. Is that seconded? Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. yeah. Sally, yeah. go for the vote, please. Yes. Councillor Ali. In favour. Councillor Bradwick. In favour. Councillor Brown. In favour. Councillor Colbran. In favour. Councillor Davies. In favour. Councillor Drake. <laughs> Councillor Drake. In favour. <laughs> Councillor Ibrahim. In favour? I think Councillor Roberts, you might need to go on mute a minute. In favour? Councillor Evans? In favour? Councillor Hussey? Um, I'll have to have Dean Sarah because he just got back. Okay, Councillor Jones? Councillor Jones. Favour. Councillor Lister. Councillor Lister. In favour. Councillor Norton. In favour. Councillor Shaw. In favour. Councillor Smith. In favour. Councillor Holmes. In favour. Councillor Spencer. In favour. Councillor Thomas. In favour. Councillor Williams. In favour. Thank, Thank you. Chair. Thank you very much. Then we go to item 6.4, report on strategic performance and indicator targets 2021-22, page 61, Dewey. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Members. Um, you've got the report in front of you on page 61. 
as many members will be aware, um, there's a requirement for us to report to Welsh Government on a seven strategic performance indicators. Um, the indicators are uh, total fires, total false alarms, total road traffic collisions, and other special service calls attended. There are other indicators, a uh, number of deaths and injuries caused by fires and accidental fires, and the percentage of dwelling fires confined to the room of origin. Um, you will see on page 62 a table um, showing the trends for those indicators. They are based on the current three quarters we're in at the moment of data and also of the last five years of data. Um, from which we've had indicators, and there's upper and lower limit shown on the, the table on page 62. There's further details can be found on page 64 to 76. Um, from these indicators uh, is the intention for me to sit down, if members approve, with John Carter from Planning, Performance and Risk Management um, near the end of this current year, to set down the exact targets for each of those indicators for the forthcoming year 21 to 22. Um, and based on the most up-to-date information, we will set those figures. Um, as you can see, the recommendations are quite clear. You endorse the performance indicator targets proposed for the year um, based on the, the table that's shown on page 62. You approve delegating to myself the, the exact targets at quarter four for the data plan, um, the reduction strategies, and refine those based on the data towards the end of March, and members approve the publication on the intranet site. So, Chair, that, that is the paper and the recommendations. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Dewey. We? Who got any questions? Just ask one, uh, Chairman, please. Yes, Bob. Uh, always had a, a concern with with traffic and such like, and I just put a little note as I was reading through. Uh, you haven't got any statistics for it for them. Road traffic collisions. You've no statistics, no sort of real hard evidence. What's the officer's gut feeling? What's the main problem with traffic incidents? Well, I, I think in common with the police and the police, it's, yeah, the, the, the speed is is one of the indicators. There's there's five indicators. People using their mobile phones uh, for severity, and people not wearing seat belts. Um, the, the, there are other things, but speed being the majority. Also, drink drugs. Um, so and, and and really not paying attention, or it is varied, councillor. But um, right. what we do, what we clearly do. Um, it's very different, and, and as members will see, there's been a significant reduction in the statistics of road traffic collisions this year, and, and it's and it, and it easily associated with COVID. Uh, however, we believe through our proactive work with young drivers, key target groups, um, that we, we will have an influence on the young drivers, having better behaviour um, when, when they become um, drivers on their own and on the road. So. We will continue that work. We're doing what we can now, but as certainly when schools and other um, facilities open, we will we will continue with our reduction work. No, thank you very much, Dewey. It was just to say, asking about that gut feeling. Thank you very much. Thank you, Val. Councillor Anyone else Norton's got any questions? Councillor Daniel Norton's indicating. Um, right, yeah, Dan. Thank you, Kelly, and um, thank you, Chair. Um, my question was basically just around road um, road collisions as well. In the calculations, has um, on obviously the target we should um, set for the next year, has the fact that more people are likely still to be working at home in the next twelve months, and even though obviously the numbers of cars on the on the road will likely increase after lockdown, it might not be the levels it was in twenty nineteen. So has that been factored in? Because uh, obviously that in itself would reduce the numbers. 
Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Councillor Norton. Um, yeah, I've, had pre I've had already had preliminary meetings with the stats team, um, we, and, and it is, as members will appreciate, um, very difficult. We will use all the, the most current, up-to-date information, and also try and predict where we are um, in relation to COVID, lockdown, the implications to that, um, and, and that's why I'm asking for delegated powers so that I'm able to take that into account when making and um, setting the targets for 21-22. Okay, Don. Okay, anyone else? Councillor Brown is indicating. Right, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just looking at the table on page um, 62 and uh, other special service calls, and it looks like the actual um, special service calls are um, just over the upper range of the um, predicted level and and in a sense the um, target range for 21 22 is <clears throat> is fairly fairly similar except it's got slightly higher um, upper end and I just wondered why the levels of um, special service calls um, seem to be uh, increasing and, and towards the higher end. Thank you. Thank you. Do we... uh, there's, a, there's a number of indicators, Councillor Brown. Um, some, some of those um, current year performance has been flooding incidents we attended, as you remember, a number of months ago in the RCT area, Pontypridd, we attended uh, a number of flooding incidents, but also as a uh, result of COVID and the pressures experienced by Welsh Ambulance and others, we are finding we are assisting the ambulance more and more um, through this pandemic. So very much like uh, Councillor Norton mentioned, th th this could carry on to next year as well, that uh, we're giving assistance to other services um, while this pandemic sort of peters out. So a number of things, flooding and also great assistance to the police and ambulance. Thank you, Dewey. Anyone else got any other questions? If not, then the recommendations are 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. Is anyone going to vote against them? If not, then someone move 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. It's been moved. I move. Second. Second. Ali? Yeah, Councillor Ali. In favour? Councillor Bradwick. In favour. Councillor Brown. In favour. Councillor Colbran. In favour. Councillor Davies. In favour. Councillor Drake. In favour. Councillor Ibrahim. Councillor Ibrahim. Sally. Yes. Sally didn't work here. Yes. He left a message on the chat box. He half left the meeting. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ellsbury's left. Councillor Evans. Fever. Excuse me. Can someone turn their mics off, please? Turn your mics I off. Think someone has a television or radio on in the background. Yeah. Please turn that mic off then. Coronation season not on until tonight. Right, go on, Sally. Councillor Hussey. In favour. Councillor Jones. In favour. Councillor Lister. In favour. Councillor Norton. Um, I in favour. Councillor Holmes. In favour. Councillor Roberts. In favour. Councillor Shaw. In favour. Councillor Smith. In favour. Councillor Spencer. In favour. Councillor Thomas. In favour. Councillor Williams. In favour. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair, can you take over for a moment? Steve? Yes. Yes, I will, Chair. Thank you. I might be I might be back if I'm not. Can I say thank you to everyone and nice to see you all? But I hope we'll be back before the meeting finishes. Thank okay. you. Okay, then, members, we're going to page 77. Uh, 
item six five. I think that's right. Yes. Sorry, yep. is that you? Yes, that's me. Thank you. Um, apologies for the long report. There is an awful lot of information within this. Um, so this late relates to your responsibilities under the local government measure to set annual improvement objectives. Uh, as we've already heard through Audit Wales, the Local Government and Elections Act will remove us from the definition of a Welsh Improvement Authority, although at the moment we don't have a date for when those provisions will be coming in. Uh, also worth members noting that obviously they set their 10-year strategic plan 2020 to 2030, which set our strategic themes and our high level objectives uh, but obviously what we do against each of those objectives will subtly change year on year um, the other point for members to note is these improvement objectives look internally as well as externally so particularly when we come to look at some of the data uh, that we've received through the consultation responses uh, it's important to note that obviously the public responses uh, had an impact when we were looking at some of the internal um, focused work. Um, probably also relevant with the number of consultation responses that we received, which, which was a little disappointing, but considerably up on, on what we were receiving a number of years ago, that obviously this consultation went out against the backdrop of COVID. Um, it was a virtual consultation for obvious reasons uh, and certainly within staff groups there'd been a lot of staff surveys uh, throughout that period so possibly an element of survey fatigue. Um, just to highlight to members as well paragraph 2.4 of the report indicates that further analysis on demographics etc will be presented today uh, we did manage to get that included within the report last minute. So there's an updated Appendix 1 of Appendix B, so in effect page 103 onwards, which gives a lot of the breakdown on demographics, age and other equality characteristics. So in key summary terms, there was broad support for the objectives that we were proposing to set for the year, so 89%. Um, either in favour or strongly in favour. Um, and then a lot of the detail behind that is within the appendices to the report, predominantly Appendix B, which starts on page 83. Uh, there are some hyperlinks within the report. Obviously, those won't work with, with hard copies, but every member's been sent an electronic copy of the agenda as well. So you should be able to access those hyperlinks there. So just picking up on a couple of the key points from the responses, page 86 looks at your uh, engagement strategy that was adopted, various forums held both within the service and externally to the service. Positively this year, we've had five responses in Welsh. So 3.1% of our, our responses were through the medium of Welsh. Um, although predominantly South Wales Fire and Rescue Service staff were the respondents, so they made up 58% uh, of the respondents. But we did have responses from healthcare professionals, voluntary sector, education sector, and quite a number from public service boards few comments in relation to the plan. Generally, it was felt that it was easy to read, although we, we have had some comments about the text and the font, uh, the fact that the plan was too long or it was hard to locate on the internet. So obviously we'll be looking at those in readiness for next year's plan. Um, looking at some of the more detailed charts. First of all, page 91, which indicates the levels of disagreement uh, with the objectives that we were setting. Um, predominantly, it's from those who worked for the service and predominantly because of the low level of responses we received, 
uh, it narrows down to four um, responses in particular, two of which have identified as working as whole time members of staff, one auxiliary and one corporate member of staff. Um, but overall, 98% of the public were in agreement and supported the objectives. Turning to pages 92 on, which look at the uh, responses on each of the um, individual areas, possibly more concerning um, and maybe something we need to do some additional comms on throughout the organisation is the number of respondents who either disagreed or strongly disagreed with the first two of our themes and objectives there. So the keeping you safe and the responding to your emergencies, um, particularly given that they are our core statutory duties that we have to perform in any event. Um, some of the remaining objectives, again, a similar spread of those in agreement, those disagreeing, possibly a slightly higher number sitting on the fence, but some of those objectives did look more inwardly facing than outwardly facing. Um, interestingly, though, overall, that the largest proportion of disagreement was in relation to the valuing our people objective and the work that we're doing with IIP, uh, maintaining well-being of our staff. Um, so those those details can be found on page 97. And obviously that that sits in with the IIP work that we're doing across the organisation. Largest response and age group, uh, predominantly um, middle aged and above, so ages 35 to 64, made up the, the largest proportion of those responding. Um, Page 110 picks up some of the response rates from the underrepresented groups. Again, disappointing that 97% of the respondents identified as Welsh, British, uh, white. Uh, only one who identified as black. Um, certainly, we are doing some work over the course of this year looking at the ONS review that's been undertaken on the categorisation of ethnic minorities so that we can learn from the review that they're doing, uh, which is going to be included within the next census review. So certainly that review is highlighting we possibly should be including categories such as Asian Welsh, Asian British, Black Welsh, Black British, uh, so we'll, we'll bring something back to members on that in due course. Um, Ron the kind of TAF was the highest responding area. Um, and so that's um, about 14 responses there. And Torvain, the Vale and Cardiff had the highest disagreement rates, but do take note of the, the very low numbers that we are talking about. There's some examples of some of the communication methods from page 116 on. I appreciate they are very small. It also includes some of the website traffic on both the Welsh and the English sites. Um, the electronic copies should be much easier to read as you, you'll be able to enlarge those. So overall with the broad um, agreement rates around the 89 percent we're recommending that members endorse the um, themes and actions for this year and the recommendation is at 4.1 4.3 pages 78 and 79 happy to take any questions that members may have Members, any questions? I can see Councillor Shaw oh. is indicating. Yes, Councillor Shaw, yes. Yes, please, Chair. Yeah, given um, the area covered by the fire service has a population of roughly one and a half million, is 124 responses actually significant in any way? I, it's certainly significantly more than we previously used to get a number of years ago where we didn't even make double figures 
uh, but it's considerably down on when we were able to undertake a lot of the face to face engagement that we've started doing over the last few years. So certainly our plan plans to attend obviously the emergency services weekend, which didn't happen. Uh, some of the Welsh events, some of the other community events has significantly impacted uh, on the number of responses that we will get this year. Yeah, I appreciate that. Do, do we need to have a review of the channels we use and the actual report itself to make it as accessible to all stakeholders as possible? Certainly we can do that. We'd, we'd undertaken one a number of years ago, which was why we started doing a lot more of the face-to-face -face engagement because that was proving to be the most popular method that we had. But obviously this year uh, we've been really restricted in that. Um, obviously, this will be the last year that we have to consult under the local government measure, we suspect, and there will then be a new performance framework being brought in by Welsh Government. And um, from emails I had tail end of last week, it looks like some of the work on that will be likely to recommence after the Welsh Government elections. That's yeah. currently on hold for them at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. I can see Councillor Brown. And Councillor Norton, I can mm, see yes. after, and the Chair. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it, I've read through the report and obviously it's, it's very comprehensive in terms of the uh, breakdown. Um, I think from looking at the consultation previously, I think there's only um, a small section at the end for comments and I just wondered if more could be got out of the survey if um, instead of a sort of a agree disagree um, thing to um, set objectives whether there would be the opportunity at the bottom to comment um, about why you agreed or disagreed with a, a particular objective and it may be that you might get more out of the survey um, that way in terms of any future direction. I was looking at page 101, for example, and it does say that um, a handful of people um, offered additional thoughts on the proposed objectives. One of them was about home working and supplying ICT and desk equipment to all staff, and then there was one about environmental responsibility and valuing staff. I just wondered if those comments have been followed up is there, is there a, a problem with um, supplying ICT or desk equipment to staff home working or what's the situation there because I think if you allow some open comments within the survey you do get a bit more um, useful feedback I think than sort mm. of just um, you know agree or disagree because you don't know the reasons although you've broken it down quite a lot in terms of um, various factors like authorities or whatever but you don't know really the reason why people are agreeing or disagreeing with them, um, uh, you know, particular objectives. And I just thought it might be, you might get a bit more, rather than analyse the sort of um, different factors within it that you have got answers on, like male, female or local authority, you might get a bit more out of it if you allowed a, a comment after each objective. Thank you. Yeah. My understanding was there was a comment box after each objective, but I will I will double check that. I know historically we've been, we've been quite <coughs> low on the number of comments um, in relation to supplying ICT. I, I don't think and there was actually. Um, I'll, I'll, double memory, yeah, I'll double okay, check. Yeah, I'll double check. In relation to supplying ICT and home working. Certainly our health and safety team have been working with managers because obviously risk assessments have to be done. Um, certainly those staff that are required to undertake home working have been provided with laptops to facilitate that. Uh, and I know that the critical incident team are looking at the risk assessments for those who need to continue working at home on an ongoing basis. So that is in hand and communicated through our uh, critical incident team updates. Yeah, Chair, could I just quickly come back? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's a, a useful response. So it sounds like the homework inside has been checked. Uh, 
there, there seem to be some suggestions with regard to um, uh, promotion of more environmental responsibility activities conducted by the service and I'm not really quite clear what that means but it, it might be useful to look into that because obviously we all want to be environmentally friendly friendly with regard to recycling of waste and so forth and I just wondered if if it was in relation to that particular aspect thank you yep certainly we've obviously fire authority endorsed not only the biodiversity action plan but also our carbon reduction plan last year that has been promoted within the service obviously we we undertake recycling of all uh, materials at the current time anyway uh, there's also been some promotion of that uh, carbon reduction plan by Geraint, who's the lead officer through our staff forums. Uh, it's also been included within our newsletters. So it may just be that um, an individual has missed some of those items of communication. Uh, but certainly it's something that we we regularly communicate to staff on. OK, thank you. Dan? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, my question was obviously around the feedback was overwhelmingly positive, which is a good thing. And it's obviously the um, same as previous years. But obviously where most negative feedback did come from was obviously from the staff who have the most um, direct impact with the service. So I'm just wondering what, obviously it has obviously been said a bit in early answers, but what additional work is going to be taking place with staff to make them obviously feel that their feedback is being acted upon where possible and but obviously we can get staff in a place that they are more happy obviously with um, the work environment. As you appreciate obviously only a really small number of staff did obviously um, take part in the survey but um, um, guess around obviously those are there to make sure they obviously feel more valued. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's looking at it in context with, you know, approximately 2000 staff employed. Uh, this was four individuals um, that provided the, the negative responses. Uh, and obviously what we don't want to do is try and target down to see who those were. We wouldn't be able to get that from the data and we wouldn't even attempt to try that. Certainly in relation to staff well-being, staff feedback, on uh, the organisation, how it's managed, how it's run, um, how they feel about it. Uh, that work is virtually on the whole part undertaken through our IIP assessments. As members would be aware, we've recently um, undergone our biannual IIP assessment. Um, so the assessor's just finishing off the last of the interviews now. So we hadn't had the report back through with recommended action points uh, to put in place yet. I know Al, I think, is in room eight, would be able to provide some further information on that should members wish it. But a report will be taken to um, HR and Equalities Committee in due course once we get the IIP report. And we always make those publish, uh, publicly available to staff um, unredacted. So they, they get to see the full report on those and what we propose to do in response. Happy with that, Dan? Yep. That was a very good answer. Thank you. I believe the chairman wants to come in. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. <laughs> can I can I follow on from um, Rod uh, comments when we talk about 120 responses? I'd be very concerned if, if that and we got the figures there of uh, up to 91%, and we only go one at 84%. I think if any other organization had that support, they'd be over the moon. And that reflects, as far as I'm concerned, an excellent um, uh, support. And 120, as Rod already said, in a population of 1.5 million, I assume that the rest of them are very happy or happy with the service. You, can, you can't assume anything else, can you? So I, I'm over the moon, as far as I'm concerned, on the response that we've had. You'll always get the one or two. We'll have uh, a dig for whatever reason. But that's a matter for them, and they, as long as it's genuine. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, those figures would be very welcome by other services 
um, it, within Wales. Yeah, I agree. Any other member wish, wish to speak? Can I just comment very briefly, Chairman? Yes, by all means, Val. When it comes to surveys, uh, yeah, they come to us on a computer. People don't go looking for these documents. But when you actually locate them, the briefer they are, the better, because I know my own heart sort of failed. I filled in one the other day for another association, and the sheer length of it was almost enough to kill me off. Um, so that the, you look at something that's concise and brief, it's difficult to take things away because then you take away the information you're getting. But the briefer they are, the more hope you have of people contributing, not looking and thinking, I'll come back and do it another time. But, you know, the support for the fire authority is great. It's a valued service people appreciate. Um, but it is disheartening. But as um, Sally said, the numbers have gone up over the years, but they need to go mm. up further still. Thanks, Thank Jim. You. Thank you so much. So, Vice Chair, can I, can I just come back on that as well? Yeah. I mean, if we, go to, if we go to page 89 where, you know, that issue was raised, uh, you know, the text friends are made hard to read, the plan is too long to contain, but 85% of respondents felt it was all right. And I, if you remember the pre-meeting, we did question that and say, can we clarify that? Are we are getting the right message across? But the indication is 85% found the plan easy to understand. Where do you draw the line, you know? How far do we go? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Chair. If no other member wants to think, I'll take the recommendations for you bring the chair back in. So the recommendations is 4-1, and 4-2, and 4-3. Sally, do you want to take a vote on those, please? Yes, please. Councillor Ali. In favour. Councillor Bradwick. In favour. Councillor Brown. In favour. Councillor Colbran. In favour. Councillor Davies. Abstain because I wasn't at the full meeting. Um, right. Councillor Drake. In favour. <laughs> Councillor Ibrahim. I believe he's left the meeting, Sally. Okay. Councillor Evans. In favour. Councillor Hussey. In favour. Councillor Jones. In favour. Councillor Lister. In favour. Councillor Norton. I'm in favour. Councillor Holmes. In favour. Councillor Roberts. In favour. Councillor Shaw. In favour. Councillor Smith. In favour. Councillor Spencer. In favour. Councillor Thomas. In favour. And Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams has left the meeting, sir. Okay, yep. thank you. Right, thank you. I'll go to item 7.1, the forward work, work programme by an authority 2020-21. Sally, again. Yes, that's just for members' information. Obviously, you have one more meeting of the municipal year next month. Any comments? No? Anyway, thank you for all turning up this morning, and uh, in an, especially when a nice cold morning like this, you're all snuggled up there. Looking forward to the next meeting and um, wish everyone healthy and uh, keep well. That's the main thing at the end of the day. Yeah, thank you, Chair and Officers. Thank okay. you, Chairman. Thank you. All thank the best. You. See you next time. Hello, Herbie. All right, Herbie. Nice yeah, to fine. see you. Bye-bye. Hey,